Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we finish our quest to finish off the 2020 final exam on heat and mass transfer. We went question by question and solved one, two, three, four, and number five. And now we look at final question number six, which is worth a lot of marks, just like number five. And it actually involves a lot of the things we've discussed in this channel. So it involves convective coefficients, it involves heat, um, heat exchangers, it involves overall heat transfer coefficient, and a lot of concepts that we looked at individually, but they're all into one question. The problem statement, um, this is a long question, so I might need to break this into two videos. The problem statement reads, the condenser in a large steam power plant can be assumed as a shell and tube heat exchanger, which consists of one shell and 30,000 tubes, each executing two passes. Each tube is thin-walled and has a diameter of 25 millimeters. The steam at a temperature, sorry, steam at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius is to be condensed on the outer surface of the tubes with an associated outside convective heat transfer coefficient of 11,000. The cooling water, as a fully developed flow, enters the tubes of the condenser at 20 degrees Celsius and leaves at 40, 34 degrees Celsius. It is known that the rate of heat transfer is 2 times 10 to the 9th watts. 1. Determine the mass flow rate per tube of the cooling water needed. 2. Determine the convective heat transfer coefficient, Hi, inside the tube. 3. Calculate the overall convective heat transfer coefficient. 4. Determine the log mean temperature difference. And 5. Determine required tube length per pass. So this is worth reading a second time. If you were doing this in the exam, be sure to read it a second time to understand exactly what's going on here and to highlight some very important information that are given in this statement. For instance, large steam power plants and consists of 30,000 tubes. So there's 30,000 tubes of these guys and each executes two passes. That is very, very important because as we've seen before in heat exchanger questions, that means that our L, right, the, the length of each tube is, uh, each tube goes twice. So for one length, each tube is going to have two passes. And that's what it means. Um, the other thing is that it's thin walled, which you already have an indication that we're going to be looking at overall heat transfer coefficient, ignoring the conduction, right? The resistance be, be, due to conduction of this tube. The steam, uh, this is steam, and it's entering at 50, and it's to be condensed, right? So this is another very important, you know, hint that you have there. If the steam is to be condensed, it's entering 15 is being condensed by the water, then we know that steam is not changing its temperature, right? If fluid is changing its phase from solid to liquid, liquid to vapor or to gas, then we know it's not changing its temperature. It's giving away energy without changing its temperature. The outer surface, so they give us a coefficient for the outer surface, and the cooling water is fully developed, so there you go, another very important tip. So you already know from the get-go that this is a fully developed flow. And enters at 20, let's say 34, 34. We need to determine the, so the things we need to determine. First, the mass flow rate per tube, right? So we're going to find some mass flow rate, and then we need to make sure that we're taking into account that there are 30,000 in there to be able to find the mass flow rate per tube. To determine the convective heat transfer coefficient, okay? Uh, so that means we're going to need to find out here. So let's write them down. So this guy here, we need to find out what is the mass flow per tube. And this guy here, the convective coefficient i. So to do this, I'm going to find, need to find Reynolds, right? And find a correct correlation for my nozzle. Then overall heat transfer coefficient, so we need to find u, the uh, log mean delta t, which is delta t log mean, and then five, what is l? What is l in my shell and tube? problem. So let's, the first thing I'm going to do, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my little box as I always do and simplify obviously this greatly and put the steam on one side and the water on the other and then we go from there, all right? So these are our previous questions that we saw, da, 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 da. and then this is for number six. 
I'm going to start by drawing our very simple rectangle box, also known as a heat exchanger. And in this box, I'm going to have, let me put this extra over here, in this box, I'm going to have steam, steam, and water. I mean, not to say steam is not water, but liquid water. And our water is going from 20, it's, being, it's heating up from 20 to 34 degrees Celsius, and our steam is entering at 50, and it's condensing, so we know it's also leaving at 50, right? So this is already an important information we extract from the text. Because this is the case, we know that Q is flowing from the steam to the water, right? We know that to be the case. Um, also, nothing is mentioned about NTU whatsoever, so I can assume that this is, oh, and actually they asked ask us to calculate the delta T log mean, right? So that means that I can go ahead and apply delta T log mean. And then for my F, my cor uh, correction factor, I'm going to say that's one because, again, nothing is mentioned in regards to my F, okay? One of the things we need to find out is the delta T log mean, and we like that's, I think, the fourth thing or fifth thing we need to find out, but given the information we have, because we know this delta T over here is 30, and this delta T over here is going to be 16, because of this information, we can go ahead and calculate that straight away if we wanted to, right? I'm not going to do it, but we could do that right now. The first thing we were asked is, what is the mass flow rate? What is the mass flow rate per tube, right? I know the water is heating up, and then I don't need to know all this heat exchanger thing, I just need to look at this, right? If my water is going from 20 to 34, I know how much energy that is required to heat up the water by that much. I just need to relate that to my specific heat, right? My C sub P. And with that, I can relate that back to my mass flow rate. So how do I do that? Well, I know that my rate of energy is related to the mass flow rate, right? And then C sub P, and the difference in temperature for the water, right? how much the water has gain in temperature. And I can look over here, my, what's my bulk temperature? I don't know my bulk temperature yet. Let's do that. My bulk temperature will be, let's see, bulk will be 20 plus my 34 Celsius divided by two, which gives me 27, 27 Celsius. So this is where I'm gonna grab my properties for this problem, right? 27 Celsius. So if I come here to the water table, properties of water, and I look at, there's no 27, but note that there is a 26.67. In the you know context of an exam, okay, what I would do, because obviously you can interpolate between these two, that's fine, and you can find the numbers um, for these two. Because in the context of a, an exam that I want to save myself time because there is limited time, I can say, assuming properties of water, at 27 Celsius are approximately equal to properties at 26.67. Okay, so this way I don't need to interpolate, and I know there will be some uh, small error associated with my math, but um, letting whoever is marking this know that you know I'm approximating, so they should expect some deviation out of what I'm getting because I'm approximating this guy here. All right. So my C sub P, which is where we were going with this, is this guy here, 4.179, okay? So 4.179. So if I want my, obviously if I want my mass flow rate, I just need to do my Q divided by my C sub P delta T for the water. So all I'm doing is, what is my, the two times 10 to the ninth watts, right? Watts divided by the, what was it, 4.1. 7, 9, C sub P, and then here we're going from 34 to 20, so that's just going to be the 14. <clears throat> then I have kilojoules over here. I'm going to have to convert that into joules right, per per kilogram, per Kelvin, and then I have different temperature there when Kelvin or in Celsius. So straight off the bat, I need to see this kilo is out of place, so I need to convert, you know, we go ahead and do times 10 to the third down here so that I have enough joules. In Kelvin. All right, so what's going to happen is my Kelvin goes away, and then my joules goes away with my watts, and I'm left with per second down here, right? And then I can get the mass flow rate. Um, this ends up being 3.42 times 10 to the fourth. And kilograms per second. Okay, so that's my mass flow rate. However, remember the question asks us to find, so number one asks us to find what is the mass flow rate per tube, right? And we have 40, uh, 30,000, 
30, yeah, 30,000 tubes, all right? So we have 3.42 times 10 to the fourth kilograms per second in, you know, the whole heat exchanger. So if I want per tube, I need to divide that by the number of tubes that I have, right? Just, just look at this, 3 times 10 to the fourth, so that these guys go away, uh, which is 1.14. Okay, and this is the answer for part one. So what is the mass flow rate per tube? That is 1.14 kilograms per second. Part two, part two asks us, part two asks us what is the internal, the internal convective coefficient. Now, instead of, you know, we have the heat exchanger, everything like I just drew, but I'm just gonna focus on the water once again, okay, because the water is where I, I have the 20, I have the 34, and I have the water, so now in order to find out what is the convective heat transfer coefficient, I need to find out the Nussel, right? The Nussel, the Nussel number. And to find out the Nussel number, I need to find out uh, whether this is a turbulent or laminar flow, because that's going to give me a different correlation. So I need Reynolds, which requires density, the free stream velocity, the diameter in the case of a pipe like such, right? And the dynamic viscosity. All good, all good from the table, good from the table. I don't have this, 